Pleasure? Hello, it's Janice in France. Thank you for joining me today. And before I begin, I want to tell you that I would appreciate it so very much if you would subscribe. I need 16,000 subscribers by at least March 1st, and I think I can make it with your help. And also, click below if you want to uh, be advised when my next video comes up. Now, I am going to try to answer as many questions as I can that I have received over the past year about becoming a resident or moving to France. So it may be a little boring for you, and if you're not wanting to move to France, it might just be one of those videos that you want to skip, because this is going to be a lot of just talking and getting you informed with uh, what you need to know. VFS Global, can you see that? That's where you need to go to get started. Years and years ago, we used to go to the French consulate or we used to go to the Indian consulate or the UK consulate, wherever we were in the United States, but not anymore. They have contracted everything out to that company and it will tell you on here uh, how to apply for a passport, uh, need form filming assistance, how to apply for a visa, they have all types of questions that they can answer for you. But I will tell you this, if you want to call their 1-800 number and get any one that speaks any type of common sense to you and answer a question, please don't waste your time. It won't happen. So let's start. Number one, I have a pen and paper here because I want to write down everything that I'm talking about. So at the end, I can go back. So I've already let you know where to go to do this. Now, of course, as suggested, you must have a passport and you must have a passport. And they even say you have to have like five uh, pages that are blank, but you want to make sure you have a passport that isn't going to expire in a couple of years. So uh, that would just create more hassle than what you want. And I will tell you right off the bat, it is not for the faint of heart. I'm 71 and I started this process when I was 69 and I am such a person that doesn't read directions that I just miss it all. So make sure you read all of your directions clearly. I was so nervous when I did my first application that I was shaking. I mean, literally shaking. So if you have someone that can sit with you, do so because uh, the application is not difficult, but you just want to make sure that you understand. Uh, they may ask you what a pre, your prenom, your surname, your prenom is your first name, like Janice, my surname is Deerwester. Uh, they may ask you, um, what other name do you use? Uh, I happen not to have a middle name, so I didn't have to put anything in there. So when you do your application, you might want to just have someone sit there with you, especially if you're nervous, because sometimes when we get nervous, we just kind of like, ah, I don't know what to do. So just fill out the application. Now, you don't have to pay for the application. You fill it out. You make a copy of it. But where you do have to pay is when you make an appointment. So after you filled out your application and you've submitted it and you've made copies of it, then you can make an appointment. And if I'm not mistaken, my appointment was like $35, okay? Then you set up an appointment and then you go to the closest VFS uh, location. There's Chicago, Atlanta, New Orleans, I believe, I know there's San Francisco, there's, and of course, Washington, D.C. But, of course, you want to be close enough so when they take your passport away from you, when you go and visit the VFS, you'll be close enough to receive your passport. So, you don't want to be in Washington, D.C. and your passport goes to Miami, Florida, unless you're planning on going to Miami, Florida to visit. You understand what I'm saying? 
and you need to have a U.S. address, of course. I used my daughter's address so that all my mail would go there and that uh, when the passport came through the second time, uh, I got it from my daughter's address. But the first time, of course, I was still living in my rental home, so I got it there. Okay. Now, when I went the first time, I had an option of either taking a self-addressed envelope or letting them send it with me paying a charge for that. The second time I went in October to redo all my paperwork, they did not give me that option. They said I had to come up with the money and I think that was another $32 to mail it to me. And it will be mailed to you uh, in your mailbox, you know, just normal mail. They won't put it on your front porch. Uh, let's see. So when you get to VFS and you talk to one of the uh, assistants there and they tell you what you did wrong or not did wrong or what you need to do, it's very easy because they will help you. If you filled out something wrong on the application, which I did last time, she just corrected it for me. So don't go there thinking that they're out to get you because they're not, they're very helpful. And you know, be patient with them because they do this every day. They run into people all the time that probably ask some of the dumbest questions but you know, sometimes we just need to ask questions and we don't think they're dumb. But make sure when you go in, that you follow the rules, your phone is turned off, and that you have either a credit card or you have cash. After they review your application, the reason they are there is to make sure that when your application and all of your paperwork gets to Washington, D.C., to the French consulate, Everything is smooth going. So they're really your friend because if you've not filled it out or you don't have the right paperwork, you will have to go back home, redo it, etc. Come back again. So they're really just helping you because they don't want the paperwork to get to Washington, D.C. and it not be complete because then Washington, D.C. has got to send you back your passport and tell you to start all over again. So they're just there as a buffer between you and the French consulate. So be kind to them and be patient with them. I know when I went, I was mistalking it because I do that when I get nervous. So I tried very hard to just take some deep breaths the second time I went. Now, when you talk about paperwork, when they're reviewing your paperwork, after they get finished, they will take you to another room and they'll do your fingerprints for you. Then when this is all over with, you will pay them the money for the fingerprints, the money for the cost of all of the application, etc., and you will pay for the postage to send your passport back to you. And to me, I think it was probably around 145 to 150 dollars. So that's what you're out. You do not pay online for the application fee. The only thing you pay online is your appointment fee. So that's about 35, you're already out 150, so it's about 175 for the entire process. Now, it may change by the time you go, it may change in three months. This was just my experience in November. Now, people have asked me, how much money do you have to make? How much money? Does it matter that you have a big savings? Does it matter that you have a trust fund? So now I'm going to go into the paperwork that you need to have. They are asking for three months of your bank statements. Okay, what they're going to ask you, and you don't find this out until you finish your application. Then they will give you a list of things that you need to bring with you. Of course, your passport. Of course, uh, your bank statements for three months. If you have three banks, you need bank statements for all of those banks. They need to see what you have coming in. You may have 5,000 coming in one, $21 a month coming in the other, and two cents coming in the other. You need to make 
copies for the last three months. Now, the first time I went, I made three copies just to make sure I had enough. The last time I went, I made two copies and she only kept one. But if I were you, I would make two copies just to be on the safe side. No one really tells you some of the rules and regs that they give you of this sheet to do. It is not very clear. You have to kind of read through the uh, lines, but I made two copies of the past three months of my bank statements just to be on the safe side. They're going to ask for a letter from Social Security and a letter if you have a pension plan. So I have pension from the state of California and the state of Georgia, and I received a letter from them. So what happens is that letter that California sends me matches up with what my bank statement says. And that's what they want to do to confirm that you are exact getting that money that you say you're getting. Now, the first time that I applied, I wanted a resident visa and I had my social security and I had my two pensions and I got a temporary residency. And when I called and spoke to someone at the French consulate, the gentleman told me it was up to the person that did the paperwork. There is no rhyme nor reason. So when you do, if you do get a temporary residency, don't take it personal like I did. I thought, oh my gosh, what have I done wrong? Do I not make enough money? You know, is it because I'm single, etc.? I just kind of beat myself up. And then all of a sudden I went, wait a minute, I'm getting to go to France for a year. Chill out. So it is not anything personal, but whatever they say, it goes. Now, you can reapply or maybe call or maybe email. I would always email and try to find out what you did wrong if it comes back that's something other than what you're wanting. The temporary residency, I emailed to find out what I did wrong and it wasn't anything that I did wrong. It was just that person that went through my paperwork and decided that I needed a temporary residency. That's how it is. It's not like rocket science. It's not like everybody gets treated the same way. It's how they are that day how they feel that day, when they look at that paperwork, is the decision they're gonna make and they will stick with it. No one is going to change it for you. Now, like me, I was given a temporary resident. You cannot, let me repeat this because I have people asking me this all the time. You cannot reapply for a resident visa until you go back to the States and you do all of this paperwork all over again. You make your appointment with a VFS all over again. You see one of the uh, assistants there all over again. You get your FBI prints all over again. You pay to have your passport sent back to you all over again. So you cannot do it in the country of France. You have to go back to the States. If and only if you get a temporary residency. If you get a residency like I received last time, you have three months to go on a website to answer some questions and pay them $200. And then eventually they will ask you to come in and they'll talk to you. And I believe you have to go see a doctor. You just get a chest x-ray and then eventually you'll get your carte vital. Now that will help you with your insurance, your prescriptions, etc. Now, let's go back to the paperwork that you have to have in order to apply for residency. You must have a year's worth of insurance. They ask right now for 30,000 euros worth of insurance. And that means if you have a heart attack, if you get hit by a car, if you have some kind of injury, that you have insurance so that you are not a drudgery on the health system in France. If you have Medicare, it will not pay. My Medicare guy said, oh yes, your type of insurance will pay. I don't care what you say, the French won't accept it. So there are different types of insurance that you can have. 
I paid $460 for a full year. I had a friend of mine that paid $2,500 for a full year. Now, the older you get, of course, you pay more. But I just got the bare basics, 30,000 euros. They want to make sure that if I die, that they can send me back repatriation and it doesn't cost them a dime. So that's just the basic insurance I got. And it was 460 euros or 460 pounds because I bought mine, believe it or not, from Ireland. And I'll put the name of it down in the description box for you. Now, my friend and I both were going with a company that was 2,500 and it was doing the same thing. We thought maybe because it was a little bit more expensive, they knew a little bit more. It was also a French company and we thought, well, it might be a little bit better. Well, when it came down to the finances, I couldn't afford it. She did. And they canceled her after three or four months because she had been in the hospital. Uh, she had some surgery. She had some other issues, medical issues, and her insurance canceled her. Now, I'm not going to say mine won't cancel me, but I'm just saying if I'm going to be canceled, it's going to be canceled with $460, not $2,500. I just couldn't afford it. Now, if there's two of you moving, that means each one of you have to have insurance. They want to know that you're covered for a year or until you get your carte vital because they don't want you to be a burden on their insurance. I mean, go figure, who blames them? So that's what happens while you are filling out your forms and getting all that, you have to make sure that you have insurance. You also will sign a form stating that you will not work in France because they don't want you to take business away from someone else that could be employed. Just face the facts. It's great to retire here, but if you're wanting to work here, you have to have an altogether different visa. If you're wanting to be a student here, you have to have an altogether different visa, and I know nothing about that. Now, I'm gonna go back to finances. People ask me this all the time. Janice, how much money do you think I need to make in order to move? I don't know. If you remember correctly, or for those of you that are new, when I first moved here in February, Social Security stopped my payments March the 15th. It had nothing to do with me moving to France. Let me say this one more time. It had nothing to do with me moving to France. The United States does not stop your Social Security because you moved to another country. What happened was there was a misrepresentation of some paperwork and some paperwork that was sent to me that wasn't forwarded on to my daughter. And it was just a big mess, but I got it straightened out when I came back to the state. What I'm trying to tell you is I applied for a uh, residency with my pension from California and my pension from Georgia and my social security. And I got temporary residency. I went back last October and I applied for residency again. Now this time I had heard from a friend of mine that was in the same boat as I was having to go back to the States to make sure I signed a piece of paper. So I asked the lady, unfortunately it was the same person I had before, is there a piece of paper saying that I want to retire in France? And she said, oh yeah, here it is. So I signed it because there's nowhere on there does it say on your application, do you want to stay here? Do you want to live here? Do you want to retire here? It doesn't ask those questions. So you have to be very careful. But since I had heard through the grapevine that this piece of paper was offered to her, I asked for it and I got it. Now, because my social security had not been resolved as far as having a piece of paper to show the consulate that I had X number of dollars that was going to be sent to me every month, I didn't have that. So the only paperwork that I showed was the paperwork, the letter, and the bank statements from my pension plan. And I got a residency. 
So what I'm telling you folks, there's really no rhyme nor reason to it. It is not a black and white system. It is not one that is cut and dry. You fill out the application, you get the residency, you come back here, you fill it out online, everything's perfect. That is not the way it goes. Now, when you do get your residency, you come back here, like I said before, you fill the paperwork out online, you pay $200 and you wait for your carte fatal. Now, what does that all cover? I have no idea. And right now, if you're trying to work on getting the process going or the paperwork going or figuring out what you want to do, don't worry about that right now. Worry about just doing your paperwork. Because you know what? In two years, it may change. When I first started this journey, I watched a YouTube and that girl told me exactly what to do. Well, guess what? YouTube was 2018 and they changed the rules 2019. So make sure when you're watching a YouTube and they're telling you all this wonderful stuff that you need to do and how easy it is, check the date. It is not an easy process. It is a process that is not the most difficult, but it's nerve wracking. It's like, okay, I'm getting rid of my items in my house. I'm taking my items to Goodwill. I'm putting items into storage. I've told my landlord that I'm moving. And if I don't get my card, my passport back with that residency on it, what am I going to do? So there are a lot of things going on in your head. I know that, I did that. And when I got the temporary residency, that's when I just fell apart and I thought, oh no, but it was okay. I got here. And then when I got here, I found out I really wanted to stay here. So honestly, it worked better for me. But I do know how nerve wracking it is because you can start getting rid of all your stuff in your home and you can sell your home. And then all of a sudden, maybe it isn't what you want or maybe it isn't what you thought you wanted. So with all of this, I've told you about the process. I would like to say this one last thing, and I'm sure I've not covered everything. I'm hoping I did, and I'm going to go back over it at the end of the video, and if I think of anything, I'll just throw it in. I would like to suggest to you that if you are planning to move to France and you don't know where you want to live, come on over. If you're not planning on moving for three or four years, come on over and, and try out uh, an area. Maybe it isn't Paris that you want to live in. Maybe it's a smaller town like I live in, Fontainebleau. Maybe you want to live in the all Safes region on the East Coast. Maybe you want to live more on the West Coast. Maybe you want to live closer to Belgium area. Maybe you want to live in the South of France. Maybe you want to live in Bordeaux. Who knows? You may get over here and go over the border to Spain and say, hey, I want to live in Spain. I don't want to live in France. So you're going to have to come and check it out and just see. Now, one last thing that I did forget. When you're doing the paperwork, you must show them where you're going to stay. And it could be an Airbnb, but they must have an address of where you're going to be. So you can have an Airbnb for a month, you can have an Airbnb for two months, and maybe it will give you time to find you a place to live. Now, finding a place to live in France is an altogether different video, and I don't have the answers for all of that. But I will tell you this, there are forums that you can go on, on Facebook, that uh, Americans living in Paris, Americans uh, moving to Paris, Americans moving to France, there are all different types that you can get information from, but make sure that what information you're getting is the correct information. Sometimes people say, oh, I did this and that, but they didn't tell you it was five years ago. Oh, well, I didn't have to do that in Washington, D.C. Oh, well, San Francisco didn't make me do that. That's okay, because I'm not worried about that. I went to Atlanta. I wanna know what Atlanta does. So every place may be a little different. So you have to just kind of make sure that you pay attention to all the details. 
you don't have to have an apartment when you get here. I happen to have an apartment because I met a friend of a friend on Facebook in 2018 and I viewed this apartment and I liked this apartment and I just happened to call her up and ask her if it was available and it was. Not everybody is quite that lucky. So when it comes time to getting an apartment in France, I don't have the clue on that. I can't do a video on that. I might can find someone that can help us out and I can do a YouTube uh, video with uh, visiting that person that can have that kind of knowledge. And there are people out there that you can get that knowledge from. I ran into a lady the other day. She has a couple of books out and also for um, a consultation, it was $295. And if it's worth it to you mentally to talk to someone that you trust, and you've read their book, but you still don't quite understand, $295 might be the way for you to go. So I'm gonna wrap it up again. Let's see. You need to go to VFS Global. It looks like this. You need to start making sure you have your passport. You need to make sure you go ahead and start your application. Then you need to make your appointment. Remember, you're going to have to pay for your appointment. And then when you get to your appointment, you're gonna to have to pay for them to mail the passport back to you. You must have a US address. It cannot be a PO box. And it cost me about $175 in November for everything. You need three months bank accounts. You need a place to stay, whether it be an Airbnb while you look around for an apartment, but they need to know where you're going to stay and they need a copy of that. It isn't just say, oh, I have that. You must have a copy of some type of document showing that you are going to stay there for 30 days or 60 days or whatever it is that you're going to be. Just that first Airbnb that you stay in or that first hostel that you stay in, or for whatever reason, maybe you're staying with a friend, that address is the address that they want to know. And if you move later on down the road, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that you have some place to stay when you get there, even if it's a hotel. You can stay in a hotel for a month, they don't mind. They just need to know where you are for that first 30 days. Then, make sure your finances are all together. Now, people have asked me about, oh, I have money, trust fund money, etc. Is that going to help? I have no clue because I don't have that kind of savings. I don't have that kind of trust fund money. I do know of a young lady that had quite a bit of money and uh, she also made quite a bit of money with uh, social security and pension and she was given a one year resident. So I don't think it has anything to do with money when it comes to that. But what I do think is the French want to know, do you have enough money to support yourself? With two people, do you two people have enough money to support both of you? And I really do think, even though I did not have my social security this last time, that I showed that I had lived here for a year on that money and I had survived. And I also had a letter from my landlord stating that I had been a good tenant, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe that helped, I don't know. You just don't have a clue. It's just one of those things, you just hope for the best. I hope I've helped you out some way, somehow, I know I haven't answered all your questions, but remember, you're just now getting started and you'll have more questions. And for those of you that have a trust fund that's set up for your children and your taxes and all of that, I can't help you out there. But if you will go to some of the forums about Americans living in France uh, or expats in France, they can help you out a lot more than me. And I also know of a very good attorney 
and he lives right here in France and he's an American and I will give you his name in case you might want to contact him and ask him for some advice or make a consultation visit with him. I hope you enjoyed this. I know this wasn't the most exciting video in the world, but I'm so very thankful my animals stayed quiet and I got to talk to you about getting a residency and becoming a French resident and enjoying the life here. Thank you so much. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments. And like I said before, I will drop those two names in the description box. And as always, I love you. Please subscribe and click that little like button. And au revoir.